Hey everybody, welcome to lessons on 48th Lane. And um, all right. Uh oh. There back. we are. We're back. We're back. All right. Well, welcome. And um, we apologize for not having it last week. We were in Anna Marie Island and super spotty internet. Right? Yeah. It just, so we, we just didn't, didn't know it. that it was going to be. So we are glad to be back. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, I got to make an adjustment before we get started. All right. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's so much better. That's so much better. Which okay. side? All right. There we go. And, and here's the thing you know, this is Lessons on 48th Lane. We want to welcome you. Uh, all along, I've been wanting to do this. So I'm going to try out some theme songs for lessons on 48th lane so this is, vote on it and yeah you, you gotta tell me if you if you like that one or if it's like back to the bay you know back to the drawing board you know it's thursday night 7 So we're glad to have you here tonight. And I don't know who else is there. Let us know who's here. We yeah. love to see that. Um, we're recording off our laptop nowadays because we couldn't figure out uh, the comments weren't coming through when we would go ver um, horizontal mm -hmm. like we needed to, to be able to see us on a screen together. All right. So here's the thing tonight. We've got us a story. We always try to do something different, some new way to tell it every uh, every week. Uh, we'd love to see who's here. We'd love to hear some comments as we get going. Mm -hmm. Tonight, what, what do you call tonight's story technique? Well, it's a lot of different things, but we're going to be doing something where we're going to be cutting a picture. It's a cutting story, yeah, uh, a cutting the, the picture story so it'll and be to help tell. Different. So we got different props. We got our little medical bag that we're going to get to in a minute. Um, well, that's going to just fall down, isn't it? All right, so we'll just put it there. And we got this character we asked, and we kind of, uh, we uh, we just wanted to put it out there that, you know, what is this story about? We'll bring it up closer as we get along. Yeah. But where are we going to start at tonight? Well, we're going to start out with, um, we're going to ask the folks out there, have you ever been sick? Like a headache or a stomachache yeah. or anything like that. And if you have been, like if you have a headache, what do you do for a headache? Well, yeah, we, we've got this handy dandy medicine right here. And, uh, you know, it, and if uh, you never just go do this, if these ki if any kid's watching, you ask your mom or your dad mm -hmm. or your grandma or grandpa, and uh, they'll probably give you some medicine. This one's for adult medicine, uh, but we've got medicine there. Right. Yeah. And so if you have a tummy ache, sometimes you take medicine for your tummy. Yeah. But there's times, so. Like you, I remember not too long ago. Yeah, about a year were, and a half ago. When you got really, really sick. I had a really bad stomach ache. Yeah. Really bad. And medicine really went. And, and, you know, like, 
Like it felt like somebody, I swallowed a whole can of soda and that somebody shook it up and then somebody popped the top and it all kind of came out in my stomach. And we call that appendicitis. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, as much as someone wanted to take care of me, uh, I needed to go to the hospital. And I was gone. And you were gone. I was gone. So you weren't taking care of no, me. No, I was You were gone. Not. I was gone. <laughs> So I went to the hospital and the doctors took care of me. And, uh, and so that, but so why, why are we talking about being sick? Cause I feel good tonight. Do you feel good tonight? I feel great. I, feel I do good. feel great. I feel good. Um, we're talking about that because there's a person in our Bible story today who got really, really sick. Yep. And her dad didn't know what to do because back in Bible times, I don't think there were hospitals. No, there were definitely not hospitals. Now, they were doctors, but they didn't know near as much, and they didn't have all the nice medicines mm -hmm. uh, that we have today. Uh, they didn't have all of that, so that was a story, and so that's the story we're going to talk about tonight. And I was just going to say one other thing, and because he was her dad, he was super worried about her and wanted her to get better, just like if we have any kids there tonight. Just like your parents, they don't like to see you sick. No. Makes them very sad. No. Or when think back when you were a kid, if your parent your parents didn't want to ever see you sick, and they don't like to see none of us do. And I don't like to even with my granddaughters, I don't like to see them not feeling well either. And you know, so that's just part of it. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of the the part of the story. Now, see, here's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tell the story from the Bible, and again. Um, by the way, you know why I feel good? You know why I feel light? Because I got a haircut. You, I forgot. Uh, I yeah. wonder if anybody knows. I feel, I feel bouncy now because yeah. my hair was weighing me down. Because who did you say you looked like? <laughs> I'm not getting that. <laughs> Don't go there. All right. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to tell the story. And while I'm telling the story, I'm gonna... Mr. Shanks <laughs> is going to take this piece of paper that has been folded in mm -hmm. half, a half piece of paper and folding it in half. And she is going to be doing some cuts throughout the story. And that's going to help tell the story. And you'll get to find out at, at the, the end, end of the happens. story, you get to see it there. And then we'll kind of talk about it here. And they really have to pay attention because we have some questions afterwards. We do. We have some questions. And you're going to get to decide which question goes first. Mm -hmm. That's part of what's in this bag. In All bag. right. So this is the paper, rock, scissor, paper night. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where the rock is. I don't know either. I'm the rock. Okay. All right. Let's rock. just start. Let's start. Let's okay. Start. Jairus. Oh. Okay. One day, Jesus and his disciples sailed across the Sea of Galilee. And so it's kind of a story by the sea again. That and you know what? Going. That's why we were going to do it last week, because we were by, by the water. Yeah, exactly. We're mm -hmm. by the... Um, uh, <laughs> Gulf of Mexico. Yes, All right. By the time they reached the other side, a big crowd had formed because they wanted to hear Jesus speak. And in the net, in the crowd, right in the middle of the crowd, somebody pushed forward, and this man's name was Jairus. Was and, that was that on the teaching steps where we were at in the Holy Land? Um, don't remember that being. Yeah, I don't because know. it doesn't say what town it is. Okay. So I don't know if it's at Capernaum. If it was at Capernaum, we were in Capernaum. Mm -hmm. But Jairus pushes forward. He's the ruler, and it says the ruler of the synagogue, which means he was kind of the head guy mm -hmm. at the synagogue. And the synagogue is the name of kind of the Jewish church where the Jewish people would gather together to worship when they weren't in Jerusalem for the temple. This was wherever towns they lived in. If there was enough Jewish people living, they would form a synagogue. And that's what he was. And Jesus was speaking, but Jairus ran up to Jesus and he fell down at his feet. And that was a way in those days of showing deep respect for somebody because you're gonna ask him something. And so Jesus stopped speaking and he listens to what Jairus says. Jairus says, Jesus, my little girl is really, really sick. In fact, I think she's dying. So please, please, please come and lay your hands on her because I know that if you will, she'll be healed. Mm -hmm. Now, Jairus only had one daughter. 
and she was very, very sick. And she was about 12 years old. So you can kind of really feel for Jairus because he's really concerned. And so he's rushed to find Jesus and he's pleading for Jesus to come. So Jesus gets up. He stops all the talking and all the teaching. He stops what he's doing. And he says, yes, I'll go. And they get up and they start to head towards Jairus's house. And Jairus, you know, and all the disciples are following him. And many of the people in the crowd want to see what's going to happen. And so they're crowding around Jesus as he walks because they're so excited to see him. And all of a sudden, there's a woman who had a disease. And she had had that disease that no doctor, there was no medicine. There was no medicine that could cure her. And she had been sick for years and years and years. And she had spent all her money on doctors and trying to get better. But she thought, if I can just touch Jesus' robe, I will be well. I'll be healed. And so she kind of goes up in the crowd, she pushes her way through, and she touches the end of his robe. And everything changes. Immediately, she knew she was healed. And she felt well again, well for the first time in years and years and years. But Jesus stopped, turned and said, who touched my robe? Who touched my clothes? And the disciples are going, Jesus, there's a huge crowd where there's people everywhere. Everybody's touching everybody. I mean, this was not the days of social distancing. No. This was just like you're in the middle. Think about a time when you were in the middle of a crowd and there's people everywhere and everywhere you move, there's there's bumping and there's so and so the disciples can't understand for a moment. And this woman, she realizes that Jesus knows, but she's too afraid to say anything because she's wondering if he's going to. Uh, say something bad about her because because she, she was sick in those days she wasn't supposed to be out among people and right now like if you have uh, this COVID yeah. if you have coronavirus the last thing you want to do is be out with people you want to be home and in those days they thought anybody that was sick should always be home and and what she had wasn't contagious it wasn't going to get anybody else sick but that's the way they thought but finally, she knew she couldn't deny it anymore. So she said, I'm the one. I'm the one mm -hmm. who touched your robe. And Jesus, instead of yelling at her, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. How cool is that? Well, what about Jairus and his daughter? Well, and I'm sure Jairus is thinking, oh. Jesus, why are you stopping? I've already told you, my daughter, she's she's really, really sick. Yeah. Why are you stopping to talk about some woman who who touched your robe, who touched your clothes? I hope he has enough time to get there. Well, that's what Jairus is thinking. Yeah. And so they start up again to head to Jairus' house. And right then, somebody from Jairus' house comes up and running and says, it's oh, no. too late. It's too late. She's yeah. not she's not living anymore. It's too late. Don't bother Jesus anymore. Wow. And Jesus tells Jairus something really, really strange. He says, Jairus, don't be afraid, but believe. Wow, that is. And he said, I'm going to your house. Let's go. And so he continues on to the house of Jairus. And as he comes near, there's all these people that are really, really sad because this little 12 year old girl is no longer living, no longer living, right? Yeah. And, and so Jesus says, don't worry. She's not dead. She's only sleeping. So he went into her bed, bed to see bedroom her. to bedroom. see her. Yeah, see, I had already cut that out. All right, so it's like that. Here she is kind of covered up, but here she is in her bed, okay? All right. So now we're going to see what happens. When Jesus said, but she's not dead, she's only sleeping, the people, the people, they tried not to, but they, they laughed. Mm -hmm. They thought, look, Jesus, we know dead. She's dead. 
She's not living. She's not sleeping. She's not taking a nap. She's dead. And Jesus pushes everybody away mm -hmm. and says, only Jairus and his wife, and they go in the room, and only Peter and James and John go in there. And there they are. And Jesus walks up to this little girl in the bed. And there she is lying there. And he says, little one, rise up. Rise up. And at that very moment, as he walked to the bed, he said, I say to you, arise. And the girl opened her eyes. And that's what happened. And she sat up. She sat up right she in She sat bed. up. And everybody couldn't believe their eyes. They couldn't believe their eyes. And so Jesus says to her parents, give her something to eat. And people, everyone was shocked. It says here, surprise. They were shocked. Oh, yeah. I would to be see. too. Man. I would be. You would be. Everybody would be. They were shocked to see that she was alive. People. And Jesus even told them, now don't tell anybody what I did. But guess what? They told everybody. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon everybody across that whole land heard about what Jesus did for Jairus' daughter. I know. I could never keep that a secret. I would have been able to no, either. That is so and cool. so you, this is this cool thing that Miss Annette made. And so I want to bring it a little closer. Yeah, I'm going to come over here. You guys can see it. You guys can see it. And you've got, you know, you've got Jesus in there. Let me see here. Uh, I got to get it where it's, I don't know. Hopefully you can see it. I'm trying to get it in there. But the coolest part, there's Jairus's dad. And yeah. he's just so sad and, and so shocked. And, and then he's shedding tears. But Jesus speaks the word, little girl, get up. And then Mrs. Shanks made this thing. So isn't that cool? Yeah. She made this thing. So when the paper gets up. You couldn't see. And now uh, her dad's eyes got big, big, because his little girl was living. Isn't that an awesome, that awesome story? That is a cool Bible oh. story. I love that. All right. So here's the thing. This is how you can help. Here's how you get to help. Now, we've got a whole little medical bag, and we got different items. Are you going to show what the items are? Yeah, you tell I can a show bit? you the items. We have, like, there's a stethoscope here and a thermometer over here and a blood pressure cuff and bandages and some medicine and a syringe for sh a shot. Okay. I don't like shots. No. I do but not like them. But each of those sections has a part of the story. And so you get to decide which item should we look at and what questions. So you can either say the syringe or the blood pressure, or the bandages, bandages or the medicine, the medicine, the stethoscope. The stethoscope. Yeah. Okay. You, so we need your help. You need to type in something that you think we should use and to ask a question. All right. So if you can do that, hey, Michelle, it's great to see yeah. you. Glad you're watching. All right. There's a bunch of you watching right now. So somebody type in again, say the items. Syringe, medicine, bandages, blood pressure, stethoscope, or thermometer. Oh, now, come on. You guys can type one of those things. One of you can do that. You don't have to be a little kid to do that. You can be a grown-up. You can be a great big grown-up and just have a young heart. So tell us which one we should be looking at first. This is awkward. Yeah. You might have to just pick one, Jeff. Okay. Oh, come on. And maybe somebody else will pick something later. Okay, since which, you don't. Which since, one would you since like? Since you're afraid of shots, let's pick the shot. All right, the syringe. And the question on the back of it is this. Who came to Jesus with a problem and what was the problem? All right. Well, should we give them a chance? Yeah. Uh, hopefully they're answering that right away. Who came to Jesus with the problem? And what was the problem? There's really two people in this story. Yeah, there is really. Yeah. Well, who was the first person? That came? Okay. What was his name? What was his name? I just want to make sure that we're not. Okay. 
because I'm thinking we may be missing stuff. Oh. Yes, we are. We're missing things. It doesn't pop up. Oh, so the medicine. Oh, Liz Smallwood said the medicine. All right, but right we'll away. Do that. We'll do that next. How about, do you want to answer that question? Well, I'm sure by now you have answered the question. Oh, I somehow <laughs> messed up. Okay. And you said gyrus, right? Yes. Gyrus. Okay. So Liz Smallwood said the medicine. I'm, right. I'm thinking that's either Caleb or Abigail that really All said right. it. All right. So here was the medicine. And as they were going to Jairus's house, Jesus, mm -hmm. what happened? What happened? Who came up to Jesus? And what did that person or thing want? Any ideas? I wonder what that person or thing did. Do what? you know? I think I know. Okay, what's the answer? Well, the woman came and, and touched his robe because she thought if she could touch his robe, she would be made well. Yeah. All Very right. good. So what's the next one? Um, oh, stethoscope. Do the stethoscope. Okay. I like the stethoscope. Okay. And quite honestly, if I had to type it, I'm not sure I know how to spell it. Here it is, the <laughs> stethoscope. Hmm, the question for that is, oh, this is a good question for you. Have you ever, ever felt impatient with God, waiting on something that you wanted God to do? Have you ever been impatient? Because I think Jairus got a little impatient. Don't you think? Well, I'm a pastor. Oh, yeah. You Pastors never... don't get impatient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Well, I got to be honest. If we were talking about tonight, me being in the hospital mm -hmm. with my first appendix a uh, year and a half ago, I was a little impatient to come home. So I don't know if I was impatient with God, but I was cer certainly impatient with God to heal my body enough to be able to heal up and be able to come back home because I was there a whole week. I'm not going to lie. Time. I was afraid to tell him he was going to be there for two hours. Yeah, I'm not the most patient person. All right. All right, let's do one more question. One more question. And I think I want to do the blood pressure. All right. What's the blood pressure one? Here's what it looks like. Okay. All right. So the question for that is, here's a good question for you again. Okay. So what does this Bible story tell us about Jesus? What do we learn about Jesus from the story? Wow. I think we learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that I think he learns is, I think he, we learned that he has time for us. Mm -hmm. You know, because what really when he got on, on the, when he came up on the shore, the people were wanting him to just teach some more, but he was more about people. Yeah. He was more about what people uh, were needing. And so immediately he goes with him and immediately he stops uh, and, and makes sure this woman knows it's more than a healing. He, he wants her to know who he is. So I think that's one thing. That's cool. Because sometimes when I'm in a hurry to do something and somebody stops me, I don't always want to just yeah. talk to them. That's hard to yeah. do. Yeah, I think that's one thing. I think another thing is obviously that Jesus is powerful. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he, and it's always interesting that the Bible is really not about the healings. It's always about pointing people back to him, mm -hmm. that he is the ultimate healer. I mean, he doesn't always heal every last thing, but that he is the ultimate healer. We need a savior. We need one who saves us. Yeah. I think that's a couple things. Good. I All think right. that's really good. And if anybody wants to add anything, you can add it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so... We're going to sing one more song? We're going to sing another song? All right. We're going to do my favorite song here. Because not only was Jairus' daughter, and I'm really sad that one of these days we're going to find out what her name was because we don't no, know. No, that's really It never know. gives us her name. Or the woman's name. Or the woman's name. Yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome in heaven to be able to just hang out with some of these people and, and hear their stories and, and hear more? So... Maybe that's a good question you can ask the folks. Who is 
would like to, besides Jesus, who would they want to meet yeah. in heaven? Can, yeah, can you pull that menu down to see if there's anything else on there? Anything else you want to do? Can you pull it down? Oh, Caleb says he's guilty. Absolutely. Good job. Good job.